there was a lot of red flags uh, that showed up in this company and I, I was one of those that made the mistake to defend them because what happened to me while I was on the road I was I was driving I'm a sap driver I was getting paid I was getting the miles what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel and we have this young man that was fed up with tribe transportation he said look man i'm gonna go ahead and drop this truck and be on my merry way and i i don't think uh, i don't think i can blame him i don't i don't i don't think i can blame this young man shout out to trucker b big trucker b shout out to him he has a story about how tribe transportation literally left him out to dry. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. I just want to give you all a full breakdown on why I decided to abandon my truck here at tribe transportation. It started about a month ago. I went to go do my uh, DOT wow. physical and I uh, found out that I had a 12.3 A1C, so I have type 2 diabetes. I was trying to tell tribe that, you know, I would like to go home to take care of it and I would like to clean out the truck and then come back to Gainesville. And a lot of times, you know, my dispatcher would be like, okay, well, you could take like a leave if you want, which I couldn't because I wasn't here a full year, which is one month away. I made the mistake of telling them and telling everybody else that I was gonna leave. I didn't expect after almost a year busting my ass through them, going broke with them, you know, I'm behind on freaking everything, but I would have never guessed that they would have done this to me. There was a lot of red flags that showed up in this company and I, I was one of those that made the mistake to defend them. I'm a sap driver, I was getting paid, I was getting the miles. Uh, but it started about a month ago. Uh, my dad, as you guys know, has, has early onset dementia. He's got both his legs cut off and he's not doing good. As you guys also know, I have a newborn daughter and I'm out five, six weeks at a time, which is not okay, you know, it's not okay to be out this long. Um, so on top of that, the diabetes, I decided it was time to go home and I made a plan to go home on. Now, I've been on good terms with Tribe and I was even gonna make a video for everybody on how to properly return a truck. And boy, did that bite me in the ass. Because after I did that really big run, I had me take a load to Lubbock, Texas. I thought, cool, start to head west. I hope, hopefully I'll be home you know, this weekend. So I get to Lubbock, Texas. Uh, so obviously I'm not gonna make it home now at this point. I understand Memorial Day weekend. So I delivered my load in Lubbock, Texas and I waited all day after my delivery. I finished around 10 a.m. Didn't hear nothing from them. Didn't know what's going on. No communication whatsoever. Next day rolls by. Ask them, what's, what's the deal? You know, uh, can I just leave the truck here to go home because I've been trying to get home? And they say, well, where's the truck at? Do you know where I'm at? You dispatch me over here. What do you mean, where's the truck at? Then another dispatcher calls me and says, all right, so the plan is we're gonna have you pick up and take it to the trial yard and you're gonna clean out, uh, you can clean out the truck there and go home. I've been frustrated. You guys knew I had to be home the 28th. You knew what the plan was. You promised me that I would get home. You said I would get home. And when somebody tells you that they're gonna do something, you know, you, you generally could take the word for it and expect them to do it. So I get to Amarillo and I'm thinking to myself, why am I even doing this? Amarillo is only 760 something miles from my house. Terrell, Texas is 1215 miles from my house. Why am I still allowing them to find a way to screw me? They will call an abandonment if you do not bring it to the yard you originally got the truck from. That's how dirty they are. So I said, you know, I'm not gonna get my final paycheck. I'm not gonna get my $100 a week. You know, I ain't gonna get shit. So I basically called my girlfriend, told them what's going on, and now they're on their way to come get me. His father was sick. He needed to get home to his father. He has a newborn baby that he was trying to get home to. And he set it the plans up with the company so that he can be home to be with his family. Now you gotta understand, family is important to a truck driver, especially to a truck driver that got a newborn baby and a father that's, that's you just don't know how much longer that he's gonna have. So shout out to this young man. Now, similar situation has happened to me just last year. Uh, my father had passed, my stepfather, he has passed. And I, I let it, my company know that, hey, you know, I needed to be home to go to my father's funeral. Now, of course, my father's funeral was in the middle of the week. 
which was on a Wednesday. And me being me, giving the company what I gave them, said, hey, I'll come in Monday. I'll work Tuesday. I just needed to be home Wednesday morning so that I could participate with my father's funeral. So that was the plan. But as you guys know, in trucking, things never goes to plan. So, of course, uh, that Wednesday, I did not get to see my father off. I did get a chance to spend with my family, but I I wasn't there to see the 21 gun salute that he that the service honored him. I wasn't there to see them fold the flag and give it to my sister. I didn't see that. I, I wasn't there to be a pallbearer to lay him to rest. I wasn't there. And all of that weighed on me. And I said, what if that was my mother? And only thing that the company could come back and tell me is, oh, I'm I'm sorry, that's trucking. No, no. Especially if 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 I gave you a plan of attack. Fast forward to this year, you guys know that I lost my uncle and uh, I took time off. Yeah, I, I did that because I knew what happened to me last year wasn't gonna happen this year with my uncle passing. May he rest in peace. So when my sister letting me know that my uncle has passed and I was lucky enough to be with my uncle that Sunday, he passed that Monday. So as soon as I got the word, I sent message out to the company and I said, hey, my uncle passed and uh, everybody got everything together. We knew that the funeral was going to be on a weekday. I wasn't sure of the day, but I got the information by the middle of the week, found out it was going to be on a Wednesday and I got back to the shop that Friday, but I already let them know that it was going to be that following Wednesday. So they already knew that, that I was going to be off Wednesday, but then I said, for all of that, I'm, I'm not doing what I did last year. I, I am going to be there at my uncle's funeral. I'm not going to miss it. I'm not going to come in and then got to rush all the way over to be with my family. I'm going to be there from the beginning, the middle, and the end. So I told my fleet manager, I said, hey, I'm going to go ahead and take Monday and Tuesday off so that I can be ready for the funeral on Wednesday. I'll, I'll chop it up with you on Thursday for the plan of attack. And the plan of attack was supposed to go and do some local BS, but I got roped into going down to Texas over the weekend. So yeah, these companies that swear up and down that they treat you like family, but they don't, they, te they, they treat you like shit. They'll treat you to the point of where they can't treat you no more. This young man right here literally said, bump it. I'm going to go ahead and abandon the truck. And let's talk about that. Because I just found out that if you don't check your DAC report, you should always check your DAC report because companies seem to be petty. And they'll put some petty BS on your DAC report, which will hem you up from, from getting with any other reputable company. Somebody will put an abandonment, but it's not actually an abandonment, especially if they know where you put the truck at. Now, if you're in a situation like this young man right here, and you got to get home, and they have a terminal, and you drop it at that terminal, and you let them know that you drop it at that terminal, returned it to keys, made sure that it was safe, sound. How can they put an abandonment? But no, they can't say, yeah, he, he put it in an authorized place, but he didn't tell us that he put it in an authorized place. So just make sure you guys read your DAC report, pull your DAC report, pull your PSP report, pull your reports when you leave in the company, because companies can be petty. And like this young man that gave his his resounding opinion on it, he was 100, he bandwagoned for the company, he defended the company, he defended the company to the point of when other drivers was bad mouthing the company, he was still 100 with the company, like, yo, I, I don't believe all of that and stuff like that. You could probably say that I bandwagoned for my company, you could probably say that I defended my company because my company did some ill stuff. They, they really did some ill stuff, but I guess I overlooked all of that because of the fact that I, I was bandwagoning. It was, it was the, it would never happen to me. I did what I was supposed to do. 
I do, Estra. I, you, you need me. I'm there. I always been there. When you needed me to 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 do some local runs, and I was supposed to be at home, I said, "Cool, I'll do it for you." But did you give me a pat on the back? No. Did you give me Did you give me a, a gift card? No. You ain't give me none of that. But I did it for you because you asked me to do it, and I knocked it out for you. Now, did I get paid for it? Yeah. You could say that I got paid for it. I got paid for it. But you asked me for a favor, and that's what this young man did. They. They, it seems as though that they asked him to do stuff and he did it. He defended the company. He did all of that for the company to turn their back on.